Simpson, giant lead scientist of the Nature Conservancy, is having a he's now a CBS News science and environmental contributor. We're pleased to have him here. Good morning. Good morning. How bad is this? Maybe some are saying it's worse than um, Exxon Valdez. Well, the people who are saying that, Charlie, are really talking about the <coughs> geographic extent of it and, and the tonnage of it. Of course, oil floats, so it's not that hard to imagine that this 1.5 million tons of debris is really heavier than it. So it, is it a serious issue? It's a serious issue, but Exxon was concentrated in a small area, and so the impacts of Exxon in that small area were very much greater. The, do the danger comes from toxicity, not from radioactivity, correct? That's right. You know, this sh uh, shipping boat that was just sunk, um, scientists got on that boat, they, they looked at radioactivity, and it was essentially background level. It was normal. So I'm not particularly worried about radioactivity, but toxicity is a real issue. And, and what specifically are you worried about in terms of toxicity? Are there, are, is it gas? Is it oil? Other elements? It's hard to know. You know, basically think about everything in your garage, and now imagine that dumping in the ocean. And some of it is going to make it out here intact, so a barrel might contain something. If it's punctured, it would have been diluted by now. Mm -hmm. That's what I think people are worried about. It's showing up on a beach. And how much... Now, one... Sorry, go ahead. Well, in terms of that, put that in perspective for us. How much garbage was already floating out there that this now added to? Well, that's what's really interesting about this, and it's great that people are concerned about this one particular issue. But to put it in perspective, there's probably over 100 million tons of garbage basically floating in the Pacific Ocean alone. So this represents one, one and a half percent of what's out there. How do you clean it up? That's a big question. Um, probably two things. The first is you've got to stop stuff getting in. 80% of what we find in the oceans comes from land, not from ships. So you've got to stop it going in, particularly single-use items, single-use plastics. Some cities try to ban it. It creates, of course, people want it, and that's the problem. And then there are some new ideas out there to scoop some of it up and make things out of it or convert it back into fuel, but that's always going to be a minuscule portion of the budget. The main thing is don't let single-use plastics get in the ocean. Well, and, but once it's there, how do you clean it up and how long does it take? Well, once it's there, to be honest, most of it's going to stay there because, you know, people think this garbage stays around like an island. And if it was an island, we could go just get it. It breaks down. It breaks down into almost microscopic particles. Right now, today, one in ten of the small bait fish you find out there, they have plastic in their stomachs that makes it away up the food chain. So it's more like a plastic soup rather than an island. So once it's in, you're going to have to wait it out, which is a long, long time, I mean, hundreds of years. Best solution, prevent it from going in in the first place. Sanjayan, thank you so much.